everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Kat. So hopefully you enjoyed um, last video when I interview Tony who talking about what is MSL and how to get into the industry. This video is the part two of the interview because the interview was quite long. Before we start, please like and subscribe uh, to support my channel and I will provide more useful content for your career development. Let's get started. So in the, after networking, I think, you know, if someone who's really sure that he or she really interested in MSL, but I think another question they have is what kind of experience, you know, can they get or can they gain after they realize the MSL is what, what they really want to do? And what kind of tips you can give to them for, for them to add onto their resume to really attract attention from their HR? Uh, one thing you have to follow is the, is the basic um, or one-on-ones when you apply for the job, right? It's really to look at the job description and try to try to match yourself um, as much as possible to the job description. Um, you know, I can only share probably one of the most common things uh, that appear on an MSO job description. You know, first of all, it uh, requires a a deep understanding of the clinical knowledge uh, in the therapeutic area, right? So, and you wanted to really look at your past experience and try to find um, that uh, experience. You know, either you know you're, you're a PhD lab scientist, or you have done some clinical research work, um, either as a clinical research associate or clinical trial manager or you know, even a translational scientist who has uh, participated in clinical trials in the past. I think those all counts. So you wanted to align yourself um, you know, scientifically to the job description as much as possible. So that's number one. I think number two is uh, most of the MSO jobs require you um, to, to have a good communication skills, right? You know, because the, 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 the basic of the job is really to build and maintain the relationship with external stakeholders. Um, so if you can find anything that you've done in your past that uh, can prove or, you know, or showcase your communication skills or your relationship building skills or, uh, or that leadership skills or anything like that, I think it would be great to be put on your CV um, or, or to bring it up in, during your interview to prove people that you can do the job. So I think that's number two, you know, communication and uh, that relationship building skills. And then uh, number three, um, which I do find it probably is, uh, you know, a, a lower ranked thing on the priority list, but I do think it might help be helpful to get you the job, uh, which I think it's really the administrative or, you know, program management skills. Um, so in my opinion, I think a lot of the times we MSLs have to deal with a lot of program management or project management. Um, and then having that organizational skills or project leading skills or whatever you wanted to call that, um, you know, is, I think it will be an add on, um, you know, or perhaps it probably will be a tiebreaker if you have a good competitor, you know, in that same uh, uh, job position. So I think if you have done anything in the past, uh, managing a scientific project or leading a clinical project and put that on your CV uh, or, you know, bring it to the interview and, you know, tell people stories um, and then use that to convince others that you will be a very organized person or, you know, or attentive to the details when you're doing the job. So I think those are probably my top three skills that I you know, if I were the hiring manager, I would I, I would tend to 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 look for in a good uh, candidate. You know, number one is you know really um, that scientific acumen, um, and number two is you know communication skill, and number three is you know just in general um, a good uh, experience. You know, uh, managing a project um, and then uh, putting things in a very organized way. So that's my, you know, number three thing. And that's my uh, three things that I, I wanted to see in people. That's awesome. I think you really, you know, summarize the key 
responsibility of being an MSL, right? The clinical knowledge, uh, the communication, you know, time of project management. That's awesome. Um, I, I didn't know like about the project management part. I thought, you know, you just need the clinical uh, ideas and um, the communication skills. So that's really great to know. Um, so um, you mentioned you can bring those stories up during interviews. So I wonder, you know, what kind of interview process it is, you know, just give us a general idea. You don't have to, you know, tell us all the details about it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, interviews vary, uh, you know, between companies and companies. Um, and it certainly will be dictated by your hiring manager. Um, you know, because the, the styles of the interviews are different, and then there are different approaches to interview questions. Um, but in general, I think, um, you know, uh, hiring managers or your, uh, your, your interviewer panel um, will try to look for several things in you. One is whether you have the scientific acumen, you know, like I said in the, in the previous question. And then second, you know, is whether you have the right personality to work with uh, external thought leaders, sort of the MSL type of personality, right? And number three is whether you will be able to fit in their team. And uh, I would say number one and number two is really, you know, things that you've been working on um, in the past um, because, you know, you started to learn about that therapeutic area, you accumulate your, your medical knowledge, and then your ability or, you know, the skills that you have learned to um, maintain the relationship with external stakeholders, those are things that you've been doing uh, or working on for the, for, for, for the past, um, you know, uh, time. And I would say number three is really key because that's something you can't control. And they wanted to look for the right person who will match their own, their, their entire team. And those questions do come up, uh, you know, in, in, in the interview. And for example, I, I would say, um, you know, they often will ask you, you know, what kind of teammates do you like to work with, or perhaps what kind of teammates do you normally dislike, you know, things like that. And then uh, I'm sure there are different approaches. And one of the, one of the method to answer these questions is the, is the star method, right? You know, you right. starting from, uh, from a situation and then uh, you use your, past experience to tell them a story, you know, you, how, how you come to, to, to resolve a conflict or whatever, you know, a, a happy ending, or it doesn't really have to be a happy ending, but, you know, how you resolve uh, these issues in the past. And they really wanted to look for uh, pieces from these, from your stories that what kind of person you are, and then more importantly, whether you will be a good fit for the entire team. So I think those are probably things that I would, uh, you know, pay attention to uh, during the interview. Interesting. So actually, it's very similar to consulting. I would say we also use Star Method. It's very popular, I think, among those client-facing roles. So during the interview, it's all they ask you questions. So it's like question answer format. Itself, they give you a case or give you some math problems. I don't know. You know, like it's pure question answer based. Am I correct? Yes, I think um, oh. the I think the most of the interviews are going to be Q and A, and then perhaps in some firms it will be one on one, in some others it will be a panel. I think it depends. I've heard uh, both, and then perhaps in some situations you will be asked to present something uh, because oh. uh, you know MSLs. One of the most important job in MSL uh, in MSLs is that uh, we do pre uh, scientific presentations. Right, so um, some of the job applications will require you to do a presentation, you know, live, um, you know, in front of all the uh, interviewers. So, and then I would say, you know, um, Q and A will probably be the major part of the interview, and then you will probably will be given fifteen to twenty minutes presenting something, and then um, perhaps followed by a Q and A session. So is that presentation about your, let's say, grad school work, or they give you a question, so you present on top of that? Yeah, that's a good question. I think it depends. Um, okay. But mostly it will be very scientifically oriented. So either you will be 
given something prior to the presentation, so meaning that uh, they've already defined what you have to present. And normally, I think it's going to be a, a scientific paper on a okay. clinical um, trial, you know, if that's a, a clinical pharmaceutical company, or perhaps if you interview for a diagnostic company, that might be a biomarker or more translational uh, focused, um, you know, uh, paper. But then, you know, the goal is really to have you, um, you know, dissect that paper in front of all the interviewers and then use uh, the slides, um, you know, to either, you know, your, your visual, you have to demonstrate to them, you know, your uh, visually and also verbally what that paper is talking about. And then perhaps, uh, you know, answering any questions that might be relevant to their company or, 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 you know, or your MSL skills. So I think that that is generally the format of the interview. Um, but, you know, um, essentially people wanted to see your presentation skills, your communication skills, and then whether you can respond to questions appropriately uh, during these sessions. Yeah, sounds very much like journal club, you know, academia. Yes, like. in a sense, yes. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Um, so uh, that's actually very interesting. Are there typically just one round of interview or multiple rounds? Um, I think in general, there will be multiple rounds of interviews, um, you know, and I think it depends on how you define rounds of interviews, but you, you definitely got to meet with different people in the company. And, uh, you know, either with your future peers, if you get hired, or people that is at your hiring manager's level. Um, so, and from- But is it typically within a day or, you know, multi different days? Um, I mean, traditionally, you will be flown to the headquarter of a company, and then everything oh. will be scheduled in one day. Um, but- before that round of interview, you might get telephone interviews, right? So you got to speak to some people and then some, sometimes it's uh, referred as screen interviews. Um, mm -hmm. It's either to speak to HR and then perhaps after the HR, you will be asked to speak to a, a few, you know, MSO colleagues. Um, and then the company will narrow down the people they wanted to bring to their headquarter to have a face-to-face -face interview. Um, but if you happen to be on the list of uh, people going to their headquarter, then on that same day, you typically get to meet, um, you know, four to five people, um, either on a one-on-one -on -one session or, you know, one to, you know, a bunch of the interview uh, session. Um, but, you know, it's typically a full day interview. Uh, you get to meet and talk um, with a different bunch of people. Yeah, that's definitely exciting, at least to me, you know, which I also miss because during the pandemic, so like my job interview was just over Skype. So I didn't have a chance to fly over, but that, that's really exciting. You can you know, go there and then really, you know, talk to people in, in person and see the office, right? So I think that's, that's very cool. Um, so actually, uh, I just, I, I'm just curious, right? Is it really hard to get an interview? Like what's your, I mean, in general, let's say average success rate to get an interview or ultimately landing a job? Um, I mean, it, it definitely depends. Uh, right. You know, it's, uh, it depends on your past experience um, and it depends on how much you match the job description. Um, but in general, I would say if you don't have ex MSL experience in the past, it's uh, definitely more difficult than people who have MSL experience. I mean, I think it's, uh, it's common sense because if you don't have the job experience, I think it's rather difficult to convince your higher manager to really place some trust uh, in, a, in, a, in a person with zero experience, right? Um, but it depends, you know, if you can demonstrate that you're a good communicator, you are, you know, very experienced with that sign, you know, that therapeutic area, then definitely you have a better odds in getting a job interview. And once you get that phone call, I think uh, definitely you're already better than, you know, the majority of the applicants, right? So, right. you know, I think Definitely, everybody will have a chance to to get in the uh, the interview, and every MSL comes this way, right? Nobody, uh, you know, 
gets to break into the MSL circle without, you know, you know, without having to take on their first MSO job. So it's definitely a little bit difficult, but you know, I think it's it's uh, it's not impossible. Right. So actually, um, it just occurred to me, you know, the three points that you mentioned. Um, the clinical experience or knowledge and communication and project management, right? So I feel like, you know, project man management and communication, people can uh, show this through other alternative approaches, right? But the clinical knowledge, you know, if somebody really coming from a basic science lab I, and how can they, you know, acquire such knowledge and what kind of experience, you know, can they actually learn from? Yeah, so I, I agree. I, um, I think for somebody who's, you know, perhaps let me just uh, use an example. If you've worked in the virology, you know, or, or perhaps in a bacteria lab, and then you wanted to go to, uh, for example, let's say a dermatology MSL position, right? So it might be a little bit difficult because, you know, you see there is a gap uh, in between, and it's a little bit difficult to convince people that somebody or though has you know very nice papers on bacteria, um, wanted to you know do some job in MS in dermatology MSO right. So I think the questions are twofold. One is how can how are you going to convince other people you have passion about that job, right? So if you don't have that therapeutic air knowledge, then um, you know, I think it's very natural to question your passion and motive to get that position. And second of all is, you know, whether you have that scientific knowledge about that particular area. But, you know, to your question, you know, how do you um, get the experience or get the knowledge of that particular therapeutic area? Um, you know, you might have to explore something in between, like an intermediate um, position. For example, if you wanted to jump from a bacteria lab to a dermatology, you know, uh, MSL position, you might want to explore opportunities such as, you know, clinical research uh, scientist or, you know, clinical trial manager positions, um, you know, just try to, you know, make the gap a little bit smaller uh, for you to make the transition, right? And then in the meantime, you know, find your passion and find ways to convince people that, a guy who used to study bacteria, you know, perhaps you made some finding that the bacteria is linked to a skin disease. And, uh, you know, that way you can convince your future manager that you really have a passion and you are truly dedicated to become a, um, you know, dermatology MSL. So that's uh, something I would say, you know, you don't, you don't try to make a huge jump, but you rather wanted to find an intermediate place to land and then uh, to perhaps uh, make that big gap into two so that it's, it, it's going to make that goal more achievable. Uh, so that would be my suggestion. Yeah, that's actually really interesting because now I can really see maybe potentially people working in bacteria lab, they just Google searching which um, bacteria can cause skin disease and then they start culturing all these bacteria. <laughs> um, but anyway, it's been actually quite a, um, quite a long time so far, but I enjoyed every, you know, answer that you've given. Um, but let's say in the, in, uh, you know, in the end, if you have any tips, um, that you would like to give for people who are looking for jobs at MSL, what would you say? Um, I would say, you know, just don't give up, um, be patient. <laughs> Um, and then be honest about, you know, your, your intentions when you reach out to people and always don't be shy when you ask for help. Um, so, I mean, that's how I did it and I succeeded in the end. So I'm sure, you know, uh, all of you will be successful in the end. Thank you so much, Tony. It's been really a pleasure um, to have you here and share all your experience and, you know, tips with all of us. So we learn, at least I learned a lot. So I hope all the audience uh, will learn a lot from this video as well. So thank you again. And um, I will see you next time. Thank you. If you have any specific questions regarding to the medical science liaison or any other questions regarding to your concern about the grad school or just life in America in general, uh, please leave it below. 
so I can reply to it as soon as possible. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.